the earliest they've been up and around. I've not even, I mean, I've seen the, the sunrise, but then I went back to bed kind of thing the first night, Feldman. Well, uh, we're gonna hit the trail early this morning. And uh, I am pretty much all packed up. And yeah, I don't know. We're not gonna leave at the same time. Whenever we're ready, we're just gonna take off, and then we're gonna meet some point on the trail and uh, try and get into. Man, those mosquitoes—they're out this morning still. They're like, "Hey, where'd you go last night?" Um. Yeah. So we're just uh, we're just gonna hightail it over to. Todd Harbor and uh, check out the check out the view. Pretty much all I just have to attend to my feet here a little bit, get those all bandaged up so they're good and ready to go. And make it another four miles just shy of, and uh, we'll see you when we get on the trail. Look around our campsite mosquito swarming area this right here that's a we're renaming campsite number two is there a three campsite number three we're renaming it the mosquito zone holy cow all right well i'm heading out a little bit josh is packing up i want to get a head start because i've been a little slower with my feet and i've been uh been babying or i've been i've been changing my the way I walk, um, and uh, because my heels are on my worst heel, worst blisters are uh, excuse me, worst blisters are on my uh, on my toes, and so I've been walking on my heels, which has put a lot of pressure on my a lot of strain on my knee, and uh, I realized that last night as I was coming in into here. I'm like, man, my knee's getting a little sore. Well, my knee's getting sore because I've been babying my toes and not using my ankles at all when I walk up or downhill. And so today, after bandaging them properly, um, that one was starting to get infected. I cut, and there's a blister about that big, maybe about that big. I cut off the, the dead skin because it had ruptured and there was sand in it. So it was, uh, it was just every time I step, it was sand grinding in my blister. And uh, you could tell it was starting to get infected. So I cleaned it out really good. Uh, bandaged it up, triple antibiotic ointment. And uh, it feels, so far today, it feels a million times better. I'm taped up, I put an ace, can't see it, but underneath here, Ace wrap on my knee this morning. I'm getting old. I don't know what to say. I'm getting old. So uh, just under four miles to Tad Harbor. And we're going to take a uh, the rest of the day. So we're going to get started early in the morning. So I had a lot of time to rest my uh, my injuries. So I won't be doing a whole lot once we get there. Um, if I if I keep going. It's uh, it's gonna be disastrous. So uh, I know my limits. I'm not tapping out, but I uh, I know when to when to pause for a bit. So Josh is gonna hike a lot faster. So I'm getting started this morning. He'll pass me on the trail, make it to uh, Todd Harbor before me. Chances are, and then uh, then we'll we'll have a nice relaxing rest of the day all right we'll catch up with you check out this view i love all these signs have the Moose antler sheds. Todd Harbor, 3.7. Pretty 
Greenstone Trail right there. But Tad Harbor, that's where I'm going. Man, those are the loudest birds. I don't know what they are. Leave in the comments section below if you know what those are. Sounds uh, part of their their sound sounds sounds like an elk call, like an elk bugle. But all right, I'll be following Hatchet Lake for a while. Cross over a beaver dam. Sure, that'll be exciting. I'll I'll show you that. I'll bring you along for the journey. a bit we've been going 1.4 miles so far I like having this on the front rather than the back um, I'm I think I'm to the beaver dam check this out this is pretty sweet flowing water This board, all right, it's a little more stable than I originally thought. Holy cow, look at that. That's Hatchet Lake. That's how much higher Hatchet Lake is. So those rocks that I was fishing off of, without this dam here, those rocks would be exposed. Look at this. This is what I got across right here. There's a good chance I end up wet here. There we go. The beaver dam, which is clogging up a bunch of this marsh over here, which is pulling all this up. Ah. Oh yeah. Careful, that board's wobbly. Oh, dude. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. Dude, if one Road of us would have went in. <laughs> well, I think I remember from Wildcrats watching it with Jake. <laughs> I forget the exact number, but their teeth like grow like at such a, an accelerated rate because they're constantly wearing them down. Their beavers are yeah. pretty, pretty amazing creatures, and they're super important to all all these kind of ecosystems. So while people may not like the dams, the dams that the beavers make are really what produce the ecosystems and the habitats for like numerous other species so like when they reintroduced wolves into yellowstone they actually saw that once they did that and they started to control the the herbivore populations beavers came back and once beavers came back they set up all these habitats and then life just exploded back into yellowstone again so beavers are a very important thing you know so most people want to blow the dams up because they don't want the water but you know in a place like this they're needed that was awesome. I've always wanted to hear a science teacher say I learned from wild crats. So. Wild crats is legit. <laughs> Look at the size of that. Holy cow. <laughs> Look at this. It gives new meaning to the word uh, or to the phrase busy like a beaver, huh? Look at this thing. Not even sure I can get over that. I mean, shoot, like. <laughs> you got to do the sitting. So this here is a little bit sketchy, a little ah. sketchier than uh, some other trails. Which she said, you know, you'll you'll run into like see more swamp wind. Yeah. You must have just dens or uh, dams. Yeah. All through here, and this even looks. <laughs> Either there's multiple beavers, or this one has ADD. He's like, I want to no out here. Oh, this one looks good. So then we were looking. That one is starting to gnaw on. So 
if you look both at of that, those both of those have notches which yeah. are as big as that one i just took a picture of look how big that tree is <laughs> and it's gonna fall boom so then might be hard with the sun but look at this so beavers are just making habitat all over this area <laughs> we are tracking tracking some human being who may or may not have been lost yeah. we're bushwhacking oh. trying to in this area there's no uh all right yeah she said you could easily get turned around just uh all right my favorite part of trekking bushwhacking all right we're definitely on the uh the trail now so all right next stop manong trail well i don't know about stop but oh man oh yeah they're marking the trail. People have tried to get, go around. You probably really can't get around. Yeah. The one section of trail that's marked right here, we are legitimately crossing over a beaver dam. Oh, look at this. <laughs> like the moose don't, they just walked right through. The moose just walked right through, it looks like. I went around the back of this tree. Yeah. And held on to these. I have a mark with all these things to go around for the old trail. <laughs> yes, I'm a, I'm a tree hugger now. Uh, I'll get behind. Big old beaver dam here. Oh. That's slick. I told you, and there's nothing to hold on to through there. Man, that, that tree wants to push somebody in, doesn't it? Yeah. See, and then you catch your feet because it's just yeah. so many rocks and <laughs> loose stiff. Man, it would be so cool to see a beaver, though. Yeah. We're hey. too loud, though. Yeah. <laughs> there's our house right there. They're hiding. Huge den, man. All right, Todd Harbor, 1.4 Hatchet Lake, 2.3. Let's see, Hatchet Lake, 2.3. Let's see how far do we actually go? 2.6, yeah, because it was three tenths of a mile out to the trail. And uh, oh look here, this is the Manong. This is so there's two uh, really kind of keynote tracks across the uh the island and the first is the green ridge trail which is kind of what most everybody does and then the uh the manong and uh this follows kind of the north shore of lake superior it's all closed off uh they don't have enough staff and and it's just too sketchy it's too difficult to get emergency back in over there so uh they closed off the uh the that that portion of the manong uh so we are uh what well, we are on the iconic manong already this is a quick hike. It is currently eight o'clock, 7.59. I got to the Manong before 8 a.m. and I have 1.4 miles. Um, I've been averaging uh, almost just right at two miles an hour today. So um, I, I will be there well, uh, well before nine o'clock. So that's exciting. Um, we have not even been leaving camp until between nine or 10. Um, actually closer to 10 every day. So this is, uh, this is great. I'll have, uh, I'll get there, get set and have a good 24 hours to rest my, uh, my knee, my blisters. Uh, I'll be able to, I'll be right on Lake Superior. So it's not technically icing, icing my knee, but it's close enough. <laughs> so, um, I'll be, uh, be just using my my be free three liter full of uh, Lake Superior ice cold water. And I'll just keep that on there and and uh, see if we can't manage it. I don't want to slow us down. So uh, we talked about possibly taking a zero day here at Todd anyways. Um, but we kind of want to get to hatchet and fish. I fished a little bit. I couldn't really go at it a ton because I'm like, man, I, ha I really have to stay off my feet, unfortunately. Can't take my boat out because I can't get my feet wet right now. 
So, all right, well, we are officially on the Monong and I will, uh, I'll catch up with you in a mile and a half. This is the most stout bridge on this whole island. Look at that. Nice little fast moving creek. Beautiful. Two tenths of a mile since I last saw you. It's pretty cool. Uh, heading up over the ridge and pretty soon we're going to be getting some views of the north end of the island and Lake Superior. It's going to be pretty sweet, pretty epic. Lots of beaver activity still over in here. Absolutely crazy. We should call this Beaver Island. Wait, they already have one of those, which is on my bucket list. And I'm sure I'll bring that adventure to you at some point. All right, heading along the Monong. Down into Todd Harbor, all of a sudden, the air is cooler. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. I can I can feel that I'm close to Lake Superior. It's like uh, you know, you go in a hot room, and uh, someone turns on the air conditioner, and you just happen to walk right by it. Uh, that's kind of what it feels like. It's pretty awesome. So, look at this, 3.9. Three point nine. I got a two tenths of a mile till I'm actually at camp. One tenth until I get to the spur trail. So should be good. Todd Harbor. There's the harbor behind me. There's Josh filling up his water. And uh, we got here well, before nine o'clock. So we pretty much have a zero day. We met, uh, we met some hikers yesterday. You had an injured uh, person and I was able to use my, uh, my Garmin, you know, and, and, and uh, help. But, uh, met him here he made his way here and uh some fishermen are taking him back to windigo they got to get more fuel for their boat anyway so uh but we're basically i mean it's not a true zero day but it kind of is tomorrow the plan is to make it to mccargo grove i think that's like going to be seven eight miles so it'll be a shorter day compared to what we've been doing longer you know longer than today but um that'll be kind of our last long hike and then the other ones we'll we'll see how we how we go but today i'm just excited to baby my feet and uh enjoy fire enjoy uh breakfast lunch and dinner nice and warm and uh not carrying i i think my pack's definitely below 40 pounds now but you know it's still still wears on you i'm definitely getting getting used to it. it's crazy but uh having a few issues here with my knee and uh, i just want to make sure that i don't uh, do any damage to it and cause us to have to abandon our uh, our plans so it's a little bit humbling i've never been the guy to slow us down or to change plans or to adjust and uh, I've always adjusted for other people, so, but it is what it is. It's what happens when you get old and you don't hike 70 miles every month. So uh, we just tipped over 50 miles. So that's pretty crazy, 50 miles. And this is what day, I guess it's, it's day five. So yeah, all right, well, uh, 
getting ready for some uh, some breakfast, some coffee, and uh, just nice chill day. Beautiful scenery. This butterfly that keeps on, I don't know, landing on places in, in my pants. He must like, like, I don't know. He must, he keeps, you see his antenna like doing this. I, I don't know. I don't really know what butterflies actually do, but it's pretty cool. It's just, just chilling. But when he folds his, folds his, his wings, I can't do it together, you know, up. Um, the bright orange that's on the top is hidden in its camouflage. You know, when he flaps, he flutters his wings. The top part of it is is bright orange. It's a it's a pretty sweet. Oh man, what an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous day! I am babying my feet, my knee. Josh is doing a few little hikes. He went over. Uh, by the dock and up and over by on the, the, the superior side. I hiked over to the mine and uh, he's, uh, he's having a good time. This is, a, this is a great day, man. The water in Lake Superior is so crystal clear. I mean, wherever you go, it's just, you don't, you don't see this all the time. It's, uh, if, I, if I end up, I may uh, do a little trek over the other side there, but he said the water is just so blue. It's uh, it's beautiful. He showed me a few pictures. So um, I'm gonna head over to the dock and fish later. And when I do that, I might just hop over to the other side of the island and take a look. But check out, check out how clear this water is. We've hiked, uh, this is day five, so we're halfway through, and we just crossed over the 50 mile mark today. And uh, it's, been, it's been a pretty sweet hike. We're, the the my, island is 45 miles long, and, uh, and we're zigzagging through the island. So we're, we'll, we'll be at probably 70, maybe as much as 80 miles uh, by the time we're done with it. This is the current condition of my feet right here. Um, the, the tape has to go all the way around, but I have blisters on the pads of my uh, pads of my feet and my heels, both of them. And so it's been pretty brutal. So uh, we woke up at 5:45 this morning, and uh, we did. We hiked about four miles, and it was pretty awesome. My uh, my feet are doing all right for now, but we wanted to get here early and uh, pretty much take 24 hours off of hiking. But I was thinking about you guys because uh, the Appalachian Trail, um, Brian and Mary just thought I'd say, hey, love you guys, hope you're doing well. Now you can uh, you can I, geek I, out a little no, bit. No, I just I was saying, look at the view. So on this side, you it just looks different. You get more of the cliff. Look at Canada. Look at the islands. I mean, it's just if you kind of mosey over there, you can look down. So it's pretty cool. I don't have a lot of geeking out to do. It's just no. Tell me, tell me about the black. <laughs> tell me about the the uh, well, the rocks over here. It's just more basalt. So you see more basalt lava flow, which has a higher iron and like magnesium content, which makes it darker, kind of what you find. Um, so most lavas tend to either be felsic, which means they're high in silica or minerals that are light in color, or you have mafic lava, which is your darker, makes your darker rock. So this is more rich in iron and magnesium and heavier metals. So it's denser, it's darker, stuff like that. And then you can see that's why these beaches have uh, more of that gray or black look to it than the red part does. So.
And the water, wait till you get up. I'll let you come out with the camera. The water almost looks green. So cool. Dude, it looks like the Caribbean. I know. That's what I saw when I came over here earlier. And then you can see like how Look at that fins. boat. Boat getting ready to go behind the island there. Oh, oh yeah. just missed it. It'll come back out. They almost, I mean like see the little like mounds of the red that's on top of the gray. So there's red sandstone sitting on top of the gray or red conglomerate, whatever it is, I can't tell. But it's just pretty sweet. Like this would have been a cool place to swim if you had like, you know, maybe some uh, shoes, like water shoes or something, where you weren't worried about cutting up the key. But that led a big boat. There it is. I mean, just, it's, it's just cool to me. I'm like, this is a pretty sweet spot. Hey guys, what is happening? I am, uh, I'm out here fishing. I haven't filmed a whole lot today because uh, uh, we've, we've been doing a whole lot of nothing. So, um, you know, it's not officially a zero day because we uh, we, we hiked four miles, but it's uh, it was pretty close. Tomorrow we're gonna do about seven, seven and a half miles. Um, it might be eight with a spur trail getting down to the camp, but uh, we are uh, we're gonna hike to McCargo Cove and, uh, and then camp there. It's right on Lake Superior, kind of like this. Um, it's a possibility it'll be a little bit better, uh, better fishing and stuff, but um, it's, been, it's been a great day. I'm, I'm actually itching. I've got, you know, it's, it's been good for, for both um, Josh and I. It's been good to kind of just take a chill day. Uh, he's feeling a little stiff. I, I'm definitely, my feet are feeling a little sore and oh, So, hey, I know you're fishing, but, and there's a, a fox that literally just ran up over in here. So he's he's scouring through the shoreline here and the campsites, just uh, seeing what goodies are left behind. So, uh, wow! Actually, I, when I first saw it, I thought it was I thought it was one of the wolves on the island, and because uh, I just I saw it just kind of rummaging over there, and I couldn't really tell how you know how big it was or or whatever. So, and it was a it was a weird color. I, I mean. It's not a red fox. It's not a. I, I don't. I don't. Not really seen one with that kind of patterning. And so, um, <laughs> oh man, my heart stopped for a second. But uh, and I keep. I keep like now seeing sticks. Like there's a stick over there that has looks like two ears, looking at me. But it's uh, it's not. So anyway, hey, um, out here in this cove and uh it is absolutely beautiful so the uh I i'm gonna i'm gonna flip around to the other camera but it is uh i don't know hour or so before sunset and uh this cove is absolutely amazing
Oh yeah, absolutely beautiful sunset. It is uh, nearing the end of day five. Today is Friday. We've been out here since Monday, and um, it's uh, man, what a what an amazing adventure. So peaceful. This is a perfect spot here. Um, and uh, but but check out what we're about to do. All right, here we go. Breaded lake trout, right here. Look at that pink skin. <laughs> Modified our mountain house meals, the bag, so they're they're useful. Second time around, we're cooking a second dinner. You still got the fin on here. Yeah, we'll eat that crunchy fin. Are you really? Oh yeah. I'll let you have the fin. <laughs> Do I'm you want to try a fin? No, I'm good. good. You don't need I'm the good. fin. <laughs> I don't need the fin. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, so compliments of the the fishermen that have been out here with us. They're out here for the whole weekend, and uh, it's too early for them to keep. So they're just going to catch them and release them. And we're talking to them earlier, and they're like, "Hey, if we get one, do you want it?" Heck yeah, we want it. So uh, that's uh, that was that was super nice of them. Saved us a little one. Saved us a little one, just enough, just enough for dinner. That's a that's oh. more. That's <laughs> just so a, much. That's a so, snack. Yeah, that's our. Uh, we already ate dinner. Yeah, that's <laughs> our our mid mid evening snack. But we're, so they pull up in the boat, and uh, they had said we're gonna we'll bring you back one, and we got like admittedly we got pretty giddy we're like started running around getting all our stuff like oh you gotta do this you gotta do that like <laughs> and then they come and we're just sitting here calmly like hey hey guys they they throw the bag of fish on the on the table here's your fish and <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're like trying not to sound like super super excited right <laughs> well, we were super, super well, we were super excited so what a perfect ending to another perfect day